Hello, it's Rod at East Coast Lumberjack, and I'm going to switch things up this week and uh, hopefully for the next little bit. Um, we've talked a lot. We've done videos about uh, how to hang an axe, how to uh, make a handle, how to choose wood. And I know there's a lot of people out there that want to use an axe. So once you actually get the axe back, you want to be able to use it. And uh, I don't blame you a bit. That's probably one of the, the best things about having an axe is actually being able to use it. So I've got a few axes that I want to, uh, to talk about. We're going to do a couple of things. This week I'm going to talk about throwing axes. And if you have a double bit of axe, even if it's a single bit of axe, you can throw an axe at a target very easily. And it's, this is the new rage across North America. There's uh, axe throwing lounges popping up everywhere. There's hatchet throwing clubs. So if you want to do this, I'm going to give you a couple of pointers. It's one thing that I do actually like to do. I've done it a, a fair bit in my life. Uh, I started out when I was uh, right around 23 years old doing it. I'm 57 now, so I'm getting a little bit of practice at throwing axes. So what I use for a throwing axe, this is just a quick little and a, and a shameless plug for my gang of two tie axes and saws. But this is a quick little sheath I made. It's just on a cardboard. And it holds my throwing axe. Okay, two Italian throwing axe, about two and a half pounds. It's a double bitter, and it's on an axe handle that's about 24 and a half inches long. This one here, I think, is 25 inches. Um, and of course, all my the boys are here today. You're gonna you're gonna meet some of the family here today. So, the boys are here training, and um, I've had a great summer. So I'm going to the uh, National uh, Steel Timber Sports championships in a couple of weeks i've been training hard for that and i'm also at the end of august going to the world axe throwing championships in uh, barrington nova scotia so this is my throwing axe and i'm going to just go quickly over uh, a few tricks that i have is, is to make you a, a, a decent axe throw in a fairly short amount of time so i'm going to take my throwing axe I'm going to take my chopping axe as well, and I, I think I've showed you some of my chopping axe before. This here is a, a key steel axe, an, or sorry, it's a, yeah, key steel, it's an Aussie speed axe. And it's my, what I call a training axe. So, uh, has a sheath on this, is actually a pretty valuable sheath now. This is an autograph sheath from my good buddy, Martin Comrick, who uh, unfortunately passed away uh, this year in a working accident over in the Czech Republic. So I sharpened a few axes for Marty uh, uh, back in uh, a couple years ago at the uh, Steel Champions Trophy over in uh, Sweden. And he couldn't get a good edge on his axes, so I put a good edge on his axes and he gave me a couple of sheaths for, for doing that for him. And uh, so now they actually, they, of course, they meant a lot then. They mean a whole lot more now. But let's go for a little walk. We're going to go out back. I'm going to show you a little bit more of the... Of the uh, of the spread here at the Cumberland Ranch. Now, one time, uh, I actually, I milked a cow for 12 years here on the farm. We had four kids, raised four kids here, and uh, on a single income, so of course. There, there. So that's the barn where we had, uh, I think we had four or five cows over the years. Milked for 12 years. At the end of it, I got a little vacuum pump and did a little bit easier than hauling on the teats all the time because uh, my last cow was an Ayrshire and she uh, she produced about 13 liters of milk a day so I had to have a little bit of help hauling the milk out of her so anyways the boys are training for the uh, upcoming national championships so that's Matt Budd he's in the rookie division that's my oldest boy Ben he's in the pro division I think he's ranked number three right now that's Big Nathan, he's ranked number two right now. Marcel Dupuy, of course, holding down the first place position, and uh, they'll be going up against him. So they're doing a little bit of training here on our training deck out back. So this is, uh, that's my get out of the sun shade on that. But of course, uh, we're gonna go over here and do a little bit of axe throwing. So we'll leave them alone, try to stay out of their hair a little bit. It's kind of embarrassing for me to train when they're here, so. Now, all you need to do, for axe throwing, you need a target, and uh, actually the, the softer wood, so spruce, this here's a pine butt, and uh, pine is really good as well for uh, for throwing an axe at. You need a bullseye, and of course, usually I, I paint other uh, rings around the outside of this, but you don't really need them, because if you want to get good at axe throwing, 
that's the only thing that matters the bullseye so we're to the wise put a bullseye on there don't worry about the rest and if you can hit that thing you don't have to worry about the other rings okay they're just bonus so your bullseye goes five feet off the ground okay so five feet up for your bullseye and then you come back 20 feet so if you pace it off here 20 feet this is my I see my board here it moves a little bit this is my 20 foot line okay and we're gonna throw from 20 feet now if you're 20 feet back and you've got a five uh, five foot bullseye target 20 feet gives you one perfect rotation of your axe so when you let go of the axe from here over 20 feet it'll turn rotate in the air and then hit with the leading edge and that's of course what you want in axe throwing so you want to be able to throw from here and hit the bullseye target so now a couple other tricks for throwing okay for those of you that, that want to learn how to throw right okay there's there's really two variables you have in anything like this even if you sight it if you sight in a rifle like okay, a scope there's the back and forth and there's the up and down so the east coast lumberjacks keys to throwing a good axe in the short amount of time as possible keep the axe straight in line with your nose and the mid part of your body Every time you move that double bitted axe, it moves right straight up and down. When you release it, it's straight up and down. And if you can do that, you, you get one of the variables right off the bat. Your back and forth is looked after because you're always going to throw straight on line with the bullseye. Okay, so that's number one. We do it that way. The second one is the variable is the up and down. And of course, how you work that out is you release it just as you're coming over your head. You release right as you can see your hands coming. Okay, so it's basically forehead height. And if you release it forehead height with a double bitted axe with a two, two foot handle, you will have one perfect revolution and you'll hit the target every trip. Okay, so that's, that's the secrets from the East Coast Lumberjack on how to throw axe. So what we'll do, I don't see my daughter here. So I need something to hold you guys up while I'm throwing the axe so you can see how it's done. So hopefully this will work. <clears throat> so we're going au natural outside here with the old East Coast Lumberjack. There's the bullseye there, there's the target. Back a little bit more, you might be able to, actually I know what I can do, I can go a little bit more of an angle. And then you can get it all. So there's a the target, and there's a the line. Okay. So hang on two seconds and I'll put a little bit of a chip in back of this. So it holds it up. And then you guys, rather than looking at the moon here, can see. Okay. All kinds of action here at the East Coast Lumberjack today. Boys, you're doing all kinds of training in the background, and we're gonna do a little bit of axe on. Okay. So the other thing is stance. If you throw with your left hand on top, which I do, my left hand goes up top. I actually I overlap my hands when I'm throwing. I've always throw like this here because the farther apart your hands are, the more variability in your axe when you're throwing it. So if you keep them tight together, you just have one point that you're throwing from. Okay, so I overlap my hands, left hand on top, left foot is leading. And that left foot is right on your 20 foot line. Okay, and then it's just a matter of launching it. So, here we go, see how we make out? Left foot's ahead. Aim right at the bullseye. Let's see how it So we're a little bit low. So that's just my first throw. Usually it takes a few throws to uh, to get warmed up and get your feel for where the bullseye is. So this is throw number two. There, a whole lot closer to the bullseye. We're getting honed in on it. Now, a couple things that typically happen when you're, when you're axe throwing. 
is either when the axe hits a target, it should hit straight up and down like this. So this is your target, your, your axe should hit like that. That gives you your full six inches to cover to hit that bullseye. If you're throwing and it's hitting like this, actually sometimes if, you're, if both points hit, it's a disqualification. So if you're over rotating, you want to lengthen out your throw. Okay, so hold on to the axe a little bit longer before you release it. Okay, that's called lengthening your throw. Um, <clears throat> sometimes if you're over rotating, you're flicking it. So you're throwing it and you're giving a little flick at the end, so it's causing it to over rotate. So again, it's a nice smooth release. And actually what I started doing when I was younger, I'd actually keep my, point my fingers right towards the target to give me a nice follow through. So if you do that, you'll uh, take away that over rotation. How about that? Nice up and down. I don't know that I put that far. We're only about a half an inch from the bullseye. Now, the bullseyes that we typically throw at in competition are big fat fellows, nice uh, uh, four inch bullseyes. But at the World Axe Throwing Championships, they're small, they're just a little uh, two inch bullseye. So that's why I have a small bullseye painted here. I was only about an inch and a half from that, but you're going to have to hit that consistently over and over again. That one a little low. So again, that's just uh, that's just for a matter of practice. I haven't, I haven't thrown a lot in the last little bit, so that's why we're off a little. I'll I'll keep throwing here a bit. But anyways, that's probably uh, that's probably good enough for today's this week's uh, video on how to axe throw. So again, double bitted axe, uh, five feet off the ground for your bullseye. Keep your line 20 feet back. You get a perfect rotation of a double bitted axe or even a single bitted axe. And again, keep the axe perfectly in line with the center part of your body. Takes away this uh, this variation back and forth. Release it right about your forehead every time. That gives you your up and down. In no time at all, you'll be throwing bullseyes. So that's it for this week. Great to see you out in the backyard of the East Coast Lumberjack. We'll be back uh, again in a week and we'll do a little bit of chopping next time so using an axe practically on the block for chopping and we'll do uh, underhand and standing we're basically bucking a log chopping it in half and felling a tree okay talkages again and remember if you haven't subscribed yet to the east coast lumberjack be sure you subscribe to my channel